Hey guys, today I'm here with my husband and we're going to be talking about some fun family board games. Hey guys, I have my husband Pat here with me today and he is a huge board game fan. And so today we put together our favorite top 10 family board games and we're just going to be talking about what they're about and we hope that your family will enjoy them too. So number 10, we have Happy Pigs. Happy Pigs? You're a farmer and you're trying to grow your pig farm and you get pigs that you buy initially at the beginning and then they can have baby pigs and you're feeding them and as you feed them they grow larger and then they, uh, there's four different seasons and every season if you haven't vaccinated your pigs then those pigs are going to die so you want to make sure that you're vaccinating them, making sure they grow and then you want to sell them. Uh, during the game to make your farm better or just to earn more money and so in Happy Pigs you're just trying to get the most money at the end of the game and uh, we just have a great time playing this game making and the pigs are all square pigs and they're really cute and uh, just the kids just love the pictures and uh, making their farm as good as it can be. Alright number nine is Outfox. In Outfoxed, you are a detective trying to catch a fox that stole a pot pie. And so throughout the game, you're moving your character around the board to different clue spots to determine the fox that stole the pot pie, if they're wearing a top hat or if they're wearing a necklace, a, have a cane, umbrella, those kind of things. And uh, there's the cool thing about the game is there's suspect cards and the players have the opportunity to look at suspects and they can put the clues in a little uh, chamber. Is this clue a something the suspect was wearing or were they not wearing it? And then based on the outcome of those clues, they're able to narrow down the suspects by eliminating people who don't have it or do have it and uh, you're trying to figure out who is the one who took the pot pie? So it's a good memory game for them. All right, number eight, we have Hey, That's My Fish. In Hey, That's My Fish, you have a certain number of penguins based on the amount of players, up to four players. So you can have up to four penguins. And they're just going around collecting fish. And as they move off of the um, hexagon that they were on, they take that fish. And they either have one, two, or three fish in each hexagon. And then as that hexagon goes away, the ice flow that all these penguins are on start to get smaller and smaller. So the amount of fish gets narrower and narrower and you're all competing. So we always have a good time playing this one, just uh, trying to get as many points as possible. All right, number seven, we have the hare and the tortoise. Hare and the tortoise. It is a rematch uh, of the hare and the tortoise competing in this race, but also there's a wolf and a lamb and a fox competing as well. And every person is going to have cards with uh, the, these different animals on them. And then you're playing these cards and they allow those different animals to move forward a certain amount of spaces, but each character plays a little bit differently. So you don't uh, necessarily, the most cards doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to win the race with that character. But uh, you don't own each character, but you have made a uh, bet in the beginning to determine, hey, do I think the fox is going to win, or the hare, or the wolf, or whatever, and you're picking two characters, and then you're trying to move those characters the most to be the winner. And everyone else, you don't know who their characters are, so you might be helping them, you might be hurting them, so it's a pretty fun game. Alright, number six is Ticket to Ride First Journey. In Ticket to Ride First Journey, you are just collecting colored cards so that you can play uh, trains down on a map. And then there's different connections and tickets that the uh, each player is trying to accomplish. So they might be trying to go from Duluth to Los Angeles and they've got to complete a route uh, to that location and there's multiple ways to do it and they score points if they can complete those connections and it's good because the kids see geography with the map 
and they're able to see where different things are and how they can reroute their trains as necessary to get to different locations. And we all ha we always have a fun time playing Ticket to Ride. All right, number five is Karuba. Karuba is uh, published by Haba, and they do a bunch of uh, kids' games, and that's what they're most well known for. And in Karuba, each person gets a player mat of a forested, like Amazon region that you're exploring. And you have one character who is pulling tiles out and calling out a number. And around each other, each other person's player board, they are grabbing that number tile and they put it on their board to complete a map or a uh, track from that, uh, from one player all the way to these temples where there's different treasures. The first person to a temple would get the most points for hitting that temple first. The second person gets a little bit less, the third person a little bit less, and it just digresses from there. But everyone is using the same tiles, but everyone's maps are going to end up significantly different. And uh, it's fun to see how everyone turns out in the end, but you're just trying to be the most efficient at building your map. That's Karuba. Number four is Animal Upon Animal. Animal Upon Animal is another Haba game, and uh, this one you just have a bunch of different wooden animals, a crocodile at the bottom or alligator, uh, and then uh, then there's like sheep, snake, penguin, toucan, mm -hmm. uh, hedgehog. hedgehog, there's a bunch of animals. Yeah. So you're stacking all these animals based on a die roll and it tells you put one animal on or two animals on or another character has to put your animal on. Uh, so these, uh, you're trying to stack it without making it collapse. And if it collapses, all the animals that fell off, you have to take into your pile. And then on your turn, you're trying to uh, stack them back up again. Really easy game, fun. The kids love it. The uh, little bit of dexterity to it, just and balancing and spatial management. Really good game. That's animal upon animal. All right, number three is for sale. So for sale has two phases to the game. So everyone starts with a certain amount of money based on how many players you have and then you are bidding for different uh, properties. And these properties all have these really unique fun pictures that the kids just love. And they love playing this game <laughs> just, just for these pictures. <laughs> like, So uh, the cards are labeled 1 through 30. and. The first card is a cardboard box, and the last card, number 30, is a space station. Oh, okay. It's a space station. Yes. And they have all sorts of fun uh, houses in between, from RVs, outhouses, teepees, uh, whatever, castles. So the kids just have a blast playing this game. And once you bid for all of these properties, at the end of the game, you're selling the properties off, and the values for selling them are anywhere from $0 to $15,000. So you could get the cardboard box, and if a bunch of uh, the cards that came out were still high values, you could get thousands of dollars for that cardboard box. And it's all about how you play those cards, when you play them, and trying to uh, outplay your opponents. It's a very fun game that's for sale. Number two is called Suspend. Okay, in Suspend you have a bunch of different metal bars and they all have crooks in them and they're all different lengths and you're trying to put them on a uh, metal bar that's uh, suspending all of these uh, player bars that everyone has and they're trying to stack them on top of each other without making the whole unit collapse. So. As it starts to grow, it, it become it looks a lot like a tree as it grows, mm -hmm. and it's like putting leaves on a tree. But as you put them on, the weight counterbalances what you put on there before, and like it, yes, and it starts to just it looks like it wants to just collapse on itself. But for some reason, it stays together. And uh, our kids and I, we always have a blast playing this game because it just looks like it's going to topple over and somehow it stays together and we just have a blast. <laughs> and our last game, number one, is called Spot It. Okay, in Spot It, it's a super quick game, super quick to set up and super quick to play. And uh, 
really just a fun game because you can play up to eight players and everyone has their own card to start off with and there's a bunch of different pictures on each card. Then a card comes out in the middle and all you have to do is be the first person to look at it and if there's a picture that matches something on your card, you call it out grabbing that card and say bus or airplane or whatever the <laughs> item the was that you saw, man with the beard, <laughs> and you stick it on your pile and that's your new card. Then a new card comes out to the middle and you do the same thing over again and it's a very speed driven game and you're just trying to analyze your card as fast as possible, look in the middle, try to find a match, and everyone is like, oh, I gotta get this as quick as possible, and uh, it's just a blast, and we play this probably almost every day because the kids just love it, it's quick to play and quick to set up. One thing I like about this game is it's a card game, there's no like dice or anything, but one thing that's fun about Spot It is it's, um, it's a thematic game, so there's all different versions of this game, there's like an original Spot It. There's also a couple different like preschool ones you can buy. They have a lot of different Disney versions of Spot It, like one for Frozen or one for Finding Nemo. The one that we have is called On the Road. So it has like road signs and people jogging and stuff that you would see outside. And we have a Christmas one. And then we have a Christmas one. I like that one too for Christmas time. Yeah. So check out Spot It and find a version that your family will really enjoy. Well guys, thanks so much for watching this and I hope that this gives you some ideas for some games that you can play with your family. Most of these games would be good for younger kids, maybe young elementary school, but if you're willing to work with your kids, and I would say that toddlers or young, like would you say like three to four year olds could probably play some of these games? Yes, yeah, some, uh, some of these games, but you could play uh, some of these games that uh, are a little bit tougher, but you just have, need to be helping them in their decision making, so. Yeah. All right, thanks so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe to see more videos, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.